Hi, this is Lenny Cameron, and I am here with Leah Geller. And oh my goodness, this book, Leah, is so much fun. I was laughing as I was reading this book. Like, you nailed the whole like mom social media, living your life out on Instagram. Like, wow, what a fun book. It was. Fun. I mean, I hope you can tell that I had fun writing it. Like, I was chuckling to myself at certain parts of this book while I wrote it. Well, I noticed like reviews, people are crediting you with making them laugh during like times that they shouldn't be laughing. Like I was actually giggling at some of the reviews, people saying like awesome mom comedy made me laugh out loud when I shouldn't have been. Like I can just imagine someone like reading this on their phone in the grocery store and like giggling exactly. to themselves. Exactly. Totally. <laughs> so tell those who are not familiar with this book, The Truth and Other Hidden Things, a little bit about what it's about. It's about a woman who on the same day that she discovers that her husband has not gotten tenure at his city university, um, that her IUD has failed. And that in her mid forties with two adolescent children, she's pregnant. And sort of that's, that's like where we find and where we meet Bells, this main character, sort of on the day she gets both pieces of news and at this crossroads in her life. And her family has to leave Manhattan and go up to the Hudson Valley where her husband finds a professor job. And um, and she goes pregnant and sort of, and she was self-conscious and sort of socially awkward. And I would even say anxious to begin with. And this just sort of like explodes when she has to move somewhere new and start over again. And as a pregnant woman who, and, and, and as an older pregnant woman in her mind, even though, I mean, sort of the big joke of this is that plenty of women have baby in their, babies in their forties, but she thought she was done. And she thought she was in another part of her life. Um, right. And, and that, well, that was interesting to me because, you know, you read a lot about women getting pregnant and when they didn't intend to, but you don't really read about women in their 40s, late 40s, mid 40s, you know, who already have older children and think that they're gonna, something else is going to happen for them. Like they're in a different phase now and that suddenly they're back in that old phase of babies and pregnancy. And she's a writer. And I, I, I particularly related to the writing pieces of this and the social media pieces of this because she kind of unintentionally ends up being like the local online gossip for the town that she's right. moved to. Right. So that's the second piece is that she moves up to the Hudson Valley and she sort of has to walk away from her job at this small city paper that she loves. And she was about to get promoted there. And then she moves up and she's nothing. And, you know, and she's trying to find a job um, writing for some local papers. And in the meantime, she decides, you know what, maybe I could blog about life up here and just sort of make it cute and funny and observations about mason jars and man buns and all the kombucha and hipsters. And then a combination of things happen. She starts to feel, she starts to see things that maybe she shouldn't have seen. She starts to hear things. And also she starts to she starts to glom onto the fact that these local mothers that she's meeting are very judge her, or at least she perceives it that way. And she overhears things that they say about her. And then she decides, well, then if you think you can say that about me, wait till you see what I can write about you. And that happens. So she launches this gossip blog basically. And she calls herself the County Duchess, which she thinks is very clever because she lives in Dutchess County. And that's the blog. And it rapidly gets kind of beyond her and a little bit out right. of control. And it starts right. to put all kinds of things at risk and right. then she can't get out of it. And so it's a really great tale you weave of like how you kind of get into something one step at a time. And next thing you know, you're, you're in deep and you you're don't know how the heck to back out. Right. She had no idea. I mean, she really just, and even though when there were times, I mean, I think we've all done this when you say to yourself, this is the point at which I should back out. Like now would be a very good time to quit even when you're having a fight with someone or yelling at someone right. or getting upset with a child and you say to yourself, this would be a very good time for me to leave the room. Some of, sometimes you leave the room and sometimes you stay and make things worse. And this should right. make things worse. Yeah, no, it's great. It's got twists yeah. and turns and it's yeah. funny. And I, I was so relating to her as a character. Let's take a quick peek at one review. And this is a review from um, Kelly Harms who wrote The Overdue Life of Amy Byler. Another great book. If you loved That's that one, great. you'll love this one too. Um, a perfect escape. And I will say that was the case for me. A little commentary here that I'm having a crazy moment in my life right now where a lot's going on and we're moving houses and it's all crazy. And your book was just brilliant escapism for oh, me. But thank thank you. you for that. So whether you're a city mouse, uh, like the hilarious and lovable narrator Bells Walker, or used to the bucolic settings that amaze the Walker family, and as Bells navigates a whoops ba baby, a career tumble, two surly twins, and that PTA lady we all know you'll laugh with and at her and cheer for her every step of the way. I loved this romp and you will too. That's a great encapsulation of kind of the tone of the book. Yeah, she just nailed it. 
So inspiration, where on earth, like there's so many things going on in this novel and it's so fun, but like, where was the spark of the original idea for it? Um, okay, the accidental pregnancy I see happen around me sometimes. It's also kind of a fever dream of mine. Sometimes I do think, well, what would happen? You know, like that my mind does go there. Um, the rest of it sort of like the academia piece is always something that I was very interested in, sort of like what's it like to be like a faculty wife, a faculty spouse, like it can come with its politics and drama. And that was always fascinating to me. Um, in terms of where she, you know, it's so interesting. Like, I don't know. I just sort of like the characters definitely come to me first. And so more than the story. And I just could see this woman and I could feel that she felt self-conscious and insecure and sort of at this phase in her life where she felt invisible and like, I was like, well, what would be a great way to sort of counter that? Like, what's the, what? And I was like, well, what if she just starts to say what she thinks and no one knows it's her? And, you know, the Dutchess County, I was, I had a couple of ideas for location. And then once I went to look at it, it was very clear that this was the perfect place for this book to be set. Um, so, I mean, those kind of, it all sort of came to me in little pieces. Um, and just sort of like the invisibility of parenting and of mothering in general is just always something that I think about and write about and talk about and just the many hats that we wear and what we and what what we would do to be seen and acknowledged sometimes. And I think that she goes to great lengths to have people see her. Right. And I love the the snarkiness of her blog kind of making fun of like all the things as millennials, like all the things that everybody's into. I, I was in the grocery store. I've managed to successfully buy like non-dairy uh, tzatziki and like non-gluten bread and like all these things by accident because in Santa Cruz where I am there's actually more of those than the original one with the, the gluten and the dairy and so it's kind of become a running joke in my house that I can't get something that's like a regular right. anything I keep accidentally buying the non-dairy kombucha version of milk like what there's is this no stuff milk. there is no milk first of all I love Santa Cruz by the way uh, we used to go there all the time when we lived in California um but um yeah, there's no more milk. And that's the other thing. Like, you know, it was kind of niche for a while, that hipsterness. Like you had to go find it in like right. little in Brooklyn. And like now it's everywhere. Because first of all, yeah. that generation is moving everywhere and they're certainly moving out of the city and they're moving to other parts. And so where I am too, you know, I live in the Bronx and it's not necessarily the hipster environment, but they're here because you can live right. up it's here. Right, it's like, good luck. Find the, find the regular milk if you can. Find it's pretty funny. The, exactly. So that was also, I just thought it'd be fun to kind of poke fun at that. And just also like how, you know, women our age interact with that generation. You know, we're kind of fascinated by them and we admire a lot about them. But at the same time, there's resentment and sort of condescension. So oh, you nailed it. it the, the tone there was perfect. Yeah, so she's, she's does done, it, does it, yeah. Does a book like this change a lot? I mean, this is your your second novel, right? Does it change a lot in editing? Like, what does your process look like? This one did not change much in editing. There were some details. I think that the final scandal was tweaked a bunch. Um, but no. Um, you know, before I hand a book in, I really do a ton of work on it. Like, it takes me a while. Like, I'm not, I really do sit and it can take a year, two years. Like, I really do know where I am and what I want. So, and, and, you know, at least with the two I've written, I haven't needed to do a ton of editing because I've done a ton of editing by the time I hand in, you know, what I consider the draft. Um, but do things do, you know, small things change, but... Um, Anything readers might be surprised was different in earlier versions than the I final? I think what would be, what was, I mean, I definitely, well, I don't want to give away too much of the ending. Don't um, do that. <laughs> so, yeah, so no, to be honest, like there, there was, you would not, you know, my husband only read an early draft and then he read the, the, you know, he read it recently. He's like, wow, the ending was a little different. And I guess it's the end. I think if, you know, yeah. sort of like the resolution looked a little bit different. I'm going to guess that the final version, because it was, was more satisfying maybe than your yeah. original one. Because it was yeah. a satisfying ending. It was, yeah. satisfying. it was a tied up ending in some ways. Yeah. yeah. So writing advice. This is your second one. It's doing great. The reviews are phenomenal. I encourage people to go read it. It's a lot of fun. A romp is a brilliant, a brilliant yeah. description. So uh, any advice, right, for anyone who might want to write a humorous novel like this or any kind of writing advice? I think, first of all, you have to treat it like it's a job, even when it isn't one. Um, so, um, even before I knew I could sell that first book, I treated it like a job. I gave it the hours it needed. Um, I didn't make, you know, I didn't do things during the week. You know, um, I, I left a day for like appointments and any social activities I really had to, you know, do, but like, I really was, it was a, when my kids were in school, I was just writing, um, and I'm doing it now, even, you know, with a draft of a book that who knows what will happen to it. You really have to take it yourself seriously 
I think take the writing seriously and just do it. Like it's your job. It's not like something you squeeze in in between things. And so, I mean, and if you have another job, which I also do have, then you just that's you just give your time. You know, you have nine to whatever or whatever your hours are. You know, for me, it's eight thirty when the kids go to school until when they come home, and those are my time to do my jobs. And if I'm not doing one, I'm doing the other, and that's all I'm doing. And then, you know, it means that sometimes things don't get done around the house and you don't make either you put food in a crock pot at 730 or eight or you make dinner very quickly when everyone's hungry. But you really you just work in there and you can take breaks, you know, an exercise break or a walk. But you have to give yourself those hours. I feel very seriously about that. And it, it made a big difference to me. That's great. And do you have any time to read? And among all of that, you've got a job, you're writing, you've got kids. <laughs> like, do you have I any time do. to read? I do. I love to read. And I am compulsive about it. And sometimes I read too quickly and I miss things. Someone will be like, oh, I love the part. And I was like, really? Because I, I don't remember that part. Um, so I do race through books very quickly. So have you, have you read anything good recently? Anything to I share with us? I have. I read two celebrity memoirs that I really enjoyed. I read Sunshine Girl by Juliana Margulies and Brat by Andrew McCarthy that both came oh. out this month and were very good and interesting and different. Um, I just got a special place for women. I believe her name is Laura Hankin and I'm very excited to read that because I liked the, her last book. And that's where I am right now. Awesome, great recommendations. And I'll, I'll put the links in the podcast so people can find those books. Great. great. Well, thank you for joining me today. This that's has been fun. Great. Anything I haven't asked you that you wanted to make sure to say about the book or about how to connect with you? You can find me on www.leegeller.com. It's L-E-A-G-E-L-L-E-R. Um, I'm also all over Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all that other stuff. I love to hear from readers. Um, that's it. There you go. You're Leah Geller author on Instagram. Your Instagram is fun. I know, I know I've know. i been looking at it. you got some great stuff up there. Um, well, this was such a blast. I would encourage people to check out both of your books. Remind us what the first one was called for anyone who hasn't read it yet. The first one is called Trophy Life, about a uh, trophy wife who ends up teaching middle school. Awesome. And I know that one also was so well received. And yeah. I haven't I haven't read that one yet. So it's next on my list. Yeah, but yeah it, was too, it was just great. I loved writing that. Well, thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much. What a treat for me. Thank you for having me.